Ladies and gentlemen of the virtual audience, good morning. I'm Fred Wilcox, Americanism Chairperson for American Legion Post 516, and your MC for today's memorial service. To the dignitaries, Gold Star families, veterans, families, and friends, welcome to the 2020 annual Memorial Day service. Memorial Day stands apart from other patriotic holidays because for Memorial Day, we mourn, honor, and remember those who have died in service of our country. We remember the names on, mo on the memorial wall behind me, the names engraved on these benches, on these bricks, and in our hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the rendition of Going Home by David Gregory and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, the invocation by Chaplain Charles Jackson, Lieutenant Colonel Retired, American Legion, Post 516, and the National Anthem by Officer Sonora Lee, Detroit, Michigan Police Department, retired, and the remembrance of prisoners of wars and missing in action. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I ask you to pray in your tradition as I pray in mine. Let us pray. Creator of the universe, be with us today as we tape the video for Memorial Day Ceremony 2020. For those who want to attend the Memorial Day Ceremony but can't due to COVID-19, we gather to remember those who took an, an oath to defend the United States Constitution with their lives. And that is exactly what they did. May we never take freedom for granted, but display a life of gratitude in service to others. In your holy name I pray, amen. Oh, say, 
can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red gleam the bombs Wow. Please direct your attention to the empty chair to my right. We should always remember and never forget our prisoner of war and missing in action. The POW MIA empty chair to my right is a physical symbol to the thousands of American POW MIAs still unaccounted for from wars and conflicts involving the United States of America. The chair cover bears an emblem. In the center of the emblem is a white disc consistent of a watchtower with a guard on patrol, a strand of barbed wire, and a silhouette of a man. Above the disc are white letters, POW, and MIA on each side of a white pointed star. Below the disc is a black and white reef. Below the reef, in white letters, the motto, you are never forgotten. This is a reminder for all of us to spare no effort to secure the relief of any American prison from captivity. The repreparation of the remains of those died bravely in the defense of liberty and a full accountability of those missing. Let us rededicate ourselves to this vital endeavor. endeavor. Thank you. You may be seated. The keynote speaker for today's service is Lieutenant Colonel Fred Edwards, United States Army, retired. Lieutenant Colonel Edwards was born at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and moved to the Atlanta area in 1959. He grew up in Fayetteville, Georgia, and graduated from Fayette County High School in 1973. Clayton Junior College, now Clayton State University, in 1975. He received a Bachelor of Science degree in criminal justice from Georgia State in 1977. Upon graduation, he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the military police corps through the Reserve Officer Training Program. 
His leadership positions and assignments includes Aerial Rifle Platoon Commander, 4th Squadron, 9th Cavalry, Fort Hood, Texas. Aviation Operational Combat Controller, the National Training Center, Fort Irwin, California. Commander, Company C, 3rd Battalion, 159th Aviation Regiment, Fort Irwin, California. Chief Overseas Deployment Training and Exercise Branch, Officer of the Deputy of, Sef of Staff Training, 1st United States Army, Fort Gillum, Georgia. Lieutenant Colonel Edwards schools include the Military Police Officer Basic Course, Fort McCullen, Alabama, Basic Airborne Course, Fort Benning, Georgia, Motor Officer Course, Fort Knox, Kentucky, Initial Entrant Rotary Wing Aviation Course, and Aviation Officer Advanced Course at Fort Rucker, Alabama. Joint Power Controller Course, Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. United States Army Aviation Safety and Accident Investigation Course at Fort Rucker, Alabama. And the Command and General Staff College at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. His military career includes numerous deployments. The most noteworthy is to Columbia, South America, where he led a Department of State approved aviation task force in support of disaster release operation. Lieutenant Colonel Edwards awards and decorations include the Legion of Merit, Meritory Service Medal, third award, Joint Service Medal, Joint Service Commendation Medal, the Army Commendation Medal, second award, and many other distinguished personal and unit awards. He wears the Senior Army Aviation Badge and the Parachutist Badge. He is rated in the TH-55, the UH-1, and the OH-58 Alpha Charlie aircrafts. After completing 22 years of service to our country, Lieutenant Colonel Edwards retired to Fayette County, Georgia, after which he owned a business for five years. But he wanted, he wanted to get back to soldiers. So he became a Department of Defense contractor with 1st United States Army, Fort Gillum, Georgia. Then he moved on to support the United States Army Central Command, U.S. Arsent, at Shaw Air Force Base, South Carolina. From 2015 to 2019, he served as a Director of Operations for the Army Aviation Heritage Foundation, Hampton, Georgia. He continues to volunteer as well as serve organizations board of directors. He and his wife, Robin, his high school sweetheart, have three grown sons. Two are combat veterans and three grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our keynote speaker, Lieutenant Colonel Fred Edwards. keep my hat on. My dermatologist might get mad at me if I don't. Chaplain Colonel Jackson, Sergeant Major Wilcox, Ms. Lee, it's an honor to serve the stage with you all today. All the families 
that have lost loved ones while serving their country. Those watching this videotape, and my good friend and distinguished soldier and patriot, Command Sergeant Major Jim Joyce, thank you for this unique opportunity to come here today under these unusual circumstances and share my thoughts and feelings about Memorial Day. What is Memorial Day? As mentioned earlier, by definition, it's a federal holiday in the United States for honoring and mourning the military personnel who died while serving in the United States Armed Forces. The United States recognizes 10 federal holidays. Memorial Day, of course, is one of them. Many years ago, I worked with Sergeant Major Retired Bob Cruz. Some of you may know Bob Cruz. He settled, he settled here in their area who told me, and I'll paraphrase, out of all the holidays this country observes, Memorial Day is the one that we should hold in the highest regard. Put everything aside and solemnly honor those great Americans who gave their lives in the service of our country. Although I was well into my Army career at the time, I never looked at Memorial Day with that kind of reference, reverence before. That brief conversation some 30 years ago changed all of that for me. What Bob said that day is what Memorial Day should be about. This is why we are here today. Through the blood and sacrifices of tens of thousands of men and women throughout our illustrious history, we're able to assemble here today and through the grace of God, repeat ceremonies, hopefully in thousands of locations around our country similar to this one. The era of my service with the Army was relatively free of prolonged combat operations. Urgent Fury in Grenada I had a brother served in that operation. Operation Just Cause in Panama. Operation Desert Shield, Desert Storm, the first Gulf War in Iraq. I had a brother in that campaign as well. Although the military was not engaged in long-term conflicts post-Vietnam through September 11th, 2001, we did focus heavily on training in order to successfully repel any aggressive notions by our Cold War rivals, the Soviet Union, Communist China, and their proxies. As the modernization and other improvements in the military began to take shape during the Reagan administration, training dollars and training opportunities began to increase as well. Between home station training, large-scale joint service, and allied supported Training exercises like Reforger in Germany, Bright Star in Egypt, and Team Spirit in Korea, to the development and resourcing of major training facilities like the National Training Center in the California's Mojave Desert, the Joint Readiness Center at Fort Polk, Louisiana, Red Flag Nellis Air Force Base, the Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center, 29 Palms, California, and the Grafton Vera Hohenfels Training Complex in Germany, tens of thousands of soldiers, airmen, sailors, and Marines trained in simulated combat conditions that were as close to actual combat as possible. <clears throat> the increased training tempo and associated realis realism during this period unfortunately contributed to an increase of non-combat injuries and deaths. Retired Army Lieutenant General Thomas Spohr said, military aviation, operating vehicles over open terrain at night, weapons firing with live ammunition, are among the military skills that must be practiced, but carry high risk. With the exception of 2004 to 2010, military training, military training accidents result, resulted in more deaths than combat during the 40 year span between 1980 and 2010. <clears throat> Although any loss of life is a tragedy, those who died while engaged in hostile actions of war, often are the most notable and memorable. However, far, far more common are the military personnel who die from unintentional injuries that occur during their day-to-day -day activities while on duty. Many of you listening to my remarks today may have lost loved ones, friends, unit members, acquaintances in combat. However, I venture to guess that a similar number of you know someone lost as a result of training accidents. I know I do. In the next 
It is, it is these few words I want to reflect on in honor today. Each of these patriots, each of these patriots I'm about to talk about had an impact on me as, as well as many, many others they came in contact with. Captain Steve Inkle Barker. Steve was my flight class, class leader in 1981. Steve didn't want this duty. He wanted to be one of the boys. He drew the short straw because he was a senior man in the class. Steve was witty, smart, and very much in love with his soon-to-be wife, Betsy. Upon graduation in October, they settled at Fort Carson, Colorado. He a medevac pilot and she an army nurse. On 4 September 1982, while conducting a medevac mission to extract an injured mountain climber, Steve's air aircraft struck a tree as it descended down the high, steep, winding canyon toward the hospital. Steve, along with the patient and the remaining four crew members, perished. CW2 Roy Gallagher. Roy and I arrived at Fort Hood, Texas at roughly the same time back in 1981. We were both fresh out of flight school, eager to embark on a new and exciting chapter in our lives and find ourselves together in the same platoon with the 6th Cavalry Brigade. My first impressions of Roy were mixed. After all, he was a former Marine in an Army unit. Having spent several years in Okinawa, and he had the tattoos to prove it. You could tell immediately, however, that he was a special individual, driven to overcome those initial impressions and get on with the business of being the best Army aviator and warrant officer he could be. Through his serious demeanor, Roy rapidly progressed in the organization, becoming that aviator the commander could count on in any situation. He left Fort Hood in 1985. His next stop was Fort Rucker, Alabama in a transition into an advanced aircraft, the UH-60 Blackhawk. On 18 April 1985, Roy, along with the instructor pilot and another student, were killed in a crash that was determined to be a result of a mechanical flaw. Roy was survived by his wife, Lori. He was 29 years old. CW2, Scott Euston. I met Scott about four days before he was killed. During that time, he and I had flown together for several days. About 10 hours of flight time, to be more accurate. That's a lot of time together in a small observation helicopter, particularly in the, challenge, in the challenging flying conditions we were in. Scott was assigned to Fort Stewart, Georgia, and I was an observer controller at the National Training Center in California. His unit had come to the desert for a two-week training exercise. On the fourth day of the exercise, 11 November 1985, Veterans Day, Scott tragically made the, tragically made the ultimate sacrifice when his helicopter collided with the second one. Three other pilots survived, all with life-changing injuries, however. During my short, short association with Scott, I'd characterize him as a very quiet professional and superior pilot. He did everything asked of him. And the members of his unit were all stunned and saddened by the events that occurred that horrible day. Scott was 27 years old. I think often of these gentlemen, and many who have given their lives doing what they volunteered to do and what they love to do. It's funny, but my memories of friends lost sometimes come rushing back in the most unusual ways. A song, a smell, a voice from across the room, a distant sound, a casual glance at a stranger who looks similar, reminiscing at beer, beer call with your buddies, an old picture, times past, even seen from TVs and movies. My wish is that your experiences of recalling lives past are similar to mine. Steve, Roy, Scott, I will never forget you. We will never forget you. Memorial Day was created to pay respect to the dead. 
This is a time to remember our fallen. It should be a somber reminder, reminder of the brave sacrifice, sacrifices men and women have made to keep the United States a free and just society. In closing, I leave you with a quote from an unknown person. Our flag does not fly because the wind moves it. It flies with the last breath of each soldier who died protecting it. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Edwards, for those encouraging and awakening remarks. Uh, we all remember comrades or friends or family members that have fallen in the defense of our country. Each year, the local American Legion posts present the family of fallen legionnaires with a token to show how much we appreciate their sacrifice and the support of military service, the Henry County community, and the Veterans Organization. This year, please join me in a moment of silence for those fallen legionnaires. Thank you. Please stand for the presentation of the reef by members of American Legion Post 516 and remain standing for a rendition of Amazing Grace by David Gregory, by Mr. David Gregory and the benediction by Chaplain Charles Jackson.
And now for the benediction. Eternal God, help us to follow the example of Jesus Christ and St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. In your holy name I pray, amen. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the ocean, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies. To the ocean, white with foam, God bless America.
our hope. You may be seated. Our hope is that you were inspired by this Memorial Day service. Thanks to every participant on this stage. A special thanks to our keynote speaker, Lieutenant Colonel Edwards, the bagpiper, the trumpet player, Henry County Park and Recreation, Mr. Jim Joyce, the media crew, the sound crew, and everyone that supported this video effort to honor our veterans on Memorial Day because it is important. And last but not least, American Legion, Pulse 516 and Pulse 55. This concludes the 2020 Memorial Day service. Please take the time to show the Gold Star families and our veterans how much you appreciate their sacrifice. Stay safe, may God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America.